Good morning, and welcome to this April 3rd, 2022 Communion Sunday Mediacast of the Heinz Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, located at 408 North Madison Street, Albany, Georgia, 31701, where the pastor is the Reverend Dr. Orl Spragan, Jr. The presiding elder is the Reverend Dr. Bobby K. Galladay, Sr., and the presiding prelate is Bishop Thomas L. Brown, Sr. Today we continue to celebrate the season of Lent. This is the fifth Sunday of Lent, and again we will have one of our members sharing with us in a special meditation for the day. Please get your bread and your juice now, so that when we come to the communion ritual, you will be ready to join us. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will be blessed by today's service, that you will accept the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, and that the Spirit of the Lord will prevail in your life. Oh, friends, remember 
what I have done tonight. You call me Master and Lord, and that is true. But in the form of a servant, I ask you now, will you love others as I have loved you? Are you willing to serve in the humblest way and follow my example day after day? Let us pray. As we share in the communion, help us to be aware, O oh God, of the crowds of witnesses who have shared his special fellowship through the centuries. Help us to keep hold this unbroken chain and daily share the love of Christ with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join in the prayer and let us join in the general prayer of confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty provoking most justly thy wrath and indignations against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn to thee, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Old Testament scripture reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 16 through 21. And today's readings come from the King James Version. Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 16 through 21. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. New Testament scripture reading comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verses 4b through 14. Philippians, chapter 3, verses 4b through 14. If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word.
Today's message is titled, Be Glad There Is a Savior. Be Glad There Is a Savior. And it's based on Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18, which reads in the King James Version, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this day and this opportunity to gather in your name, to worship, and to particularly participate in the service, the ritual of Holy Communion. We thank you, O oh God, for sharing yourself with us as one of us, that we might be saved. We bless your name this day. Help us to hear you as you speak by the Spirit. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Be glad. There is a Savior. During this time in our history, a time in which the war in Ukraine seems to have taken center stage, many persons have seemingly forgotten the other wars and conflicts that also are occurring throughout the world, as well as some of the ongoing health and humanitarian crises. As human beings, we also tend to do that with our own lives and situations, to focus primarily on the crisis at hand, the problem at hand, and to forget about or to put on the back burner the things of our mind and spirit, our collective condition and spiritual well-being. This time of Lent calls us to bring those things forward and to reflect upon them with biblical lenses and new spiritual insights. This might seem to some to be a contradiction of Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 18, which says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. But this passage is given within the context of a captive and defeated Israel who see themselves as not having measured up to what they could have been and see themselves as a poor image of what they once were. Have you been there? Is this where you find yourself now? If you're truly participating in the disciplines of Lent, fasting and prayer and self-reflection and Bible study and sacrifice and, and those things that go with that, if you're truly participating in the disciplines of Lent, you cannot help but come to some similar conclusions about your own life. If Lent is a season of repentance, there must be some failings in righteousness some sins. If Lent is a season of drawing close to God, then there, there must be, there, there, this says in particular, there has been some and remained some distance in the relationship. If Lent is a season of sacrifice, it says there must be some selfishness somewhere. If Lent is a season of humility, it says there is some pride that must be dealt with. Israel was characterized by these things, by all these things, and God placed them in the hands of the Babylonians as punishment for their sins. Yet God would not and did not forget them. You may be experiencing what you call some punishment in your own life because of some things that, that you have done, some things that you have left off doing some sins in your life. But bear in mind, keep in mind, just as God did not forget Israel, God has not and will not forget you. Speaking through the prophet Isaiah, God told the people to remember how he had delivered them in times past, bringing to mind their deliverance from the Egyptians who had enslaved them, bringing to mind how they had walked over the dry sea after the, the Lord God had parted it bearing in mind all the events that came before that and that came after that, keeping in mind and causing them to remember their great deliverance from a great captor. These were indeed amazing displays of God's power and God's grace. But God was also telling them through this prophet Isaiah they could move beyond past victories and even present dismays to future joy and praise. In fact, they could start right then. God says, I delivered you then, 
and I will do it again. Israel, and we also need to be reminded that whatever is binding you, holding you captive, is no match for God. We may get ourselves in, into some terrible situations. Yes, we do. But God is able to deliver. Verse 19 says God will do a new thing, a thing unimagined, a thing never before seen. A thing that only God can do. God will provide life in places that seem impossible. In dry and desert places. And all that are recipients of this new life shall show forth God's praise. They shall be examples of God's praise, God's glory. And they themselves shall lift God in praise and glorify God. As you consider your life with God, is it really a life without God? Without the life that comes from God, you are a wilderness. You are a dry and deserted place where no life can thrive. As you reflect on your Christian spiritual reality during this season of Lent, do you find that you are weighed down with past sins and disappointments? That you have not lived up to the potential that God has given to you? Do you find that your vitality is no vitality? This is good to know because if you know what you do not have, then you have the potential to be renewed in the power of God. Be no longer sad and despondent. Be glad. There is a Redeemer. There is a Savior. There is one who can and who will set you free if you will not settle to dwell in past sins, but will look up to him now and look to the future with hope. And that one is named Jesus. But lest you think yourself to be someone who, who has it going on, and that you have nothing to worry about because as far as you can tell, you have a clean bill of spiritual health. Let us turn briefly to the Apostle Paul in the New Testament as he shares some of his life story in the scripture in Philippians chapter 3 verses 4b through 14. We, we read those scriptures earlier. In verses 4 through 6, he recounted all the things and all the achievements that would make for a successful religious person in his day, a successful religious Jew. And he claimed exceeding success in each area. Each one of them. He said, I'm successful. I have achieved. I have done great things. I have been a great person. I have come from a great line of people. If we were doing such a thing today, one might include being a child of the parsonage or being in a long line of preachers or, or Sunday school teachers or missionaries even. Perfect attendance at Sunday school and, and Bible study might come to mind. Always giving the tithe and giving offerings above the tithe. You know, that's what we're supposed to do anyway. Singing in the choir, serving on the usher board, or, or, or some other church group or auxiliary. All of these things might come to mind, and you might be able to look at that and say, I'm doing well. You might even be able to add that there's a pew in the sanctuary with your name on it, or some other piece of furniture or, or dressing. You might be able to say that there's a plaque on the wall honoring you for something you have done or something you have given to the church. You might even be able to say that you are a founding member of that particular church congregation or someone in your family was a founding member. So you may lay particular claim to that. Now hear what Paul says about those things in, in verse 7. But what things were gained to me those I counted loss for Christ. He went on to say that he had indeed undergone the loss of all these trophies and, and all these badges of honor in pursuit of the gospel, 
not only to share it with others, but to lay hold of it, to lay hold of Christ for himself, for the saving of his own soul. Earthly positions and accolades are powerless to save you from the destruction of sin. They cannot save or, or deliver you from death and hell. And they mean nothing in the grand scheme of your life though they can and, and should be used to the praise and glory of God, using them to reach others for Christ, that they might be saved. And that's what Paul said. I, I have these things that I, I can talk about. I have these things that I can say about myself. But at the same time, he said that, that these things are merely tools. And I lay them aside, and, and some of them had actually been taken from him. So he says that I have nothing, I have lost all of these things, that I might be the one that God has prepared and called to be a witness to bring souls to Christ. Whatever you have, it doesn't mean anything in this life except it can be used as a tool to bring others to Christ. Paul's goal was to abandon all ideas and, and conclusions of his own perfection and to constantly pursue the perfection that is exemplified in Christ Jesus. Rather than chase after the stuff of this life, he chose to chase after Christ. Why? And why use the analogy, why use the, the wording of chasing after, of, of running after, of pursuing, of pursuit? Why use that language? Because even though he realized he could not attain, and that was the basis, he realized he could not attain, he could not equal to the goodness, the righteousness, the perfection of Christ. But even though he realized he could not attain it, could not achieve it, couldn't be equal to Christ in perfection and righteousness and holiness and love in this life, he said, I'm going to chase after it. I'm going to pursue it because he realized that though he couldn't achieve it, what he could do was achieve some level of perfection in Christ. He knew he couldn't do any of it without Christ, but he said, if I do it in Christ, I can achieve some level. He knew that the pursuit would bring some level of achievement in loving, some level of achievement in living as Christ did. And that is what God expects. And that is what God commands those who love him and follow him to do. Moreover, those who strive after Christ in this life, the scripture tells us, and Paul understood well, those who strive after the perfection of Christ in this life, will be perfected by him, will be perfected by him in the life to come. Yes, now we are partial. Now we, we know in part, now we do in part. Now our acts are incomplete. Now we are incomplete, but the scripture tells us that when Jesus comes to receive his own, those who have believed in him and sought him, they will be perfected in him. They will be made complete in him. So what does this mean? It means that as you run away from that which is sin, because it is not like God, and run to holiness, run to the righteousness of God, because it is like God, you will suffer some setbacks and some defeats along the way. And there will be some people who will cause you to suffer some setbacks and defeats. And there will be the temptations of Satan, some of which you may not avoid. Try as you might. You may not avoid some of them. There may be some pitfalls. There, there, there will be some losses along the way. Things you've placed confidence in, you will find are not able to perform that which you thought they would. And you'll find that you yourself have shortcomings. But it also means that you ought not fail in your trying. 
Your heavenly Father watches not to condemn you, but to save you. Just as he watched Israel and placed Israel in punishment, in captivity under the Babylonians, he did it not to leave them there so that they would die, but he did it so that they might re re repent of their ways, might turn back to him and live. And if you will not look and dwell in your present sin and your present situation, but use it as the learning tool that God intends it to be, and if you will give your life to him as God intends and pursue and follow after him, however good or bad your journey may be, if you leave your journey and give your journey to the Lord, he will deliver. That's what the scripture says to us today. He will deliver. If you but look to him with hope and faith for salvation, you will receive it. He will give it. You don't have to try to establish your own salvation. You don't have to try to worry about getting yourself out of all the fixes that you may have gotten yourself into. Look around. Yes, that's what we do in Lent. Look without and within. That's what we do in Lent. But then the scripture tells us to look up. Be glad. There is a Savior, Jesus, the Lord. Be glad. Yes, you have some, when you look at yourself, when you go through self-examination, you see some things that don't make you happy. But be glad. There is a Savior. Trust that you will trust the Lord this day. Put your trust in him. Lean on him. Look to him that you may live, that you may be saved. God bless you is my prayer.
Let us prepare now for the service of Holy Communion. If you haven't already done so, please take a moment now to go get your bread and juice, whatever symbols you are using for this day. Receive now this invitation to the Lord's table. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God meekly kneeling upon your knees, or assuming some other appropriate posture of holy submission. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, the prayer of consecration said by the elder. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction of the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Take the bread before you, and let us eat together. Jesus said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of him. The cup before you represents Jesus' shed blood, as the bread represented his broken body. Take the cup and let us drink together. Jesus said that as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of him. You have shown by receiving that you remember and that your intent is to lead a new life following the commands of God. If this is your faith in the broken body and shed blood of Jesus on your behalf for the forgiveness of sins, if this is your faith and your intent, you may be at peace, love and serve the Lord and others in his name. Amen.
whether in person or by social media. Thank you for joining us today for this April 3rd, 2022 media cast of the Heinz Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. We pray this service has been a blessing to you and that the Lord will use it to draw you close to him, to trust in him, and to continue to help you through the week. If you received the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior today, we rejoice with you in thanking God that you have chosen to put your trust in Christ and invite you to join us as a member of the family of Heinz Memorial. We also pray that you will continue to receive these services as a means to your discipleship and spiritual growth. Please write to us or email us at heinzmemorial at gmail.com to let us know how the Lord is blessing you. Thank you for your prayers, presence, participation, and support. Contributions may be mailed in, picked up, or given electronically by downloading the Givelify app and searching for the Heinz Memorial CME Church in Albany, Georgia. Follow the steps in the app to make your contribution. Contributions may be mailed to us at Heinz Memorial CME Church, 408 North Madison Street, Albany, Georgia, 31701. Please continue to be safe, wear your mask, sanitize your hands, maintain social distance according to CDC guidelines, and if you have not, strongly consider receiving a COVID-19 vaccination and booster. Here are some additional announcements and observations. Daily scripture readings are provided through the online ministry of Vanderbilt University Library. If you are a member of Heinz and desire to attend the Bishop's Appreciation this coming Saturday, April 9, at the Dunbar Hopkins Event Center in Thomasville, please text or email Pastor Sprague. There are three tickets remaining. We will resume in-person worship next Sunday, April 10, 2022. Those who wish to receive Holy Communion in person should contact either the pastor or Sister Wendy Edwards before next Sunday. This is offered to our sick and shut-in persons. Again, contact either the pastor or Sister Wendy Edwards. Heinz Memorial CME Church was founded 131 years ago in the month of April. We will celebrate this event on April 24, the fourth Sunday in this month. We invite you to give your special additional offering of $131 anytime this month, but especially by or on April 24. Thank you for your contribution. We also invite all who can to come share with us in person in the Family Life Center for the 1045 AM worship on that day. Today's service is available via Pastor Spragan's YouTube channel, and you may also listen via phone at 1045 a.m. Eastern Standard Time by dialing plus one nine seven eight nine nine zero five thousand and using access code one five one four zero four. Please minister to our sick, shut in, and others with your prayers and acts of loving support. These include Sister Ella Miller, Sister Mary Williams, Sister Geneva Hill, Sister Juanita Miller, Sister Janet Edwards, Brother Michael Sanderson, Sister Julia Williams Harris, Brother Charles Harris, Brother Marquavius Mason, Brother Prince Brooks, Brother Keith Lemon, Sister Henrietta Benson, Sister Judith Namasaka and family, Reverend Lydia Spragan, and Sister Janine Richard. Let us remember in prayer the family of Brother Julius Pegues, who has been on our list, who passed away this past Wednesday, March 30th, 2022, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. A brief story of Brother Pegues may be read if you go to tulsaworld.com and search for his name. Our schedule of activities for the week include a Tuesday, Board of Christian Education and Formation meeting at 5.30 p.m. Information to be shared. And on Tuesday, April 5th, 
The Commission on Social Justice and Human Concerns will meet via conference call at 7 p.m. Please note also on these days, there are daily scriptures provided for our spiritual well-being and nourishment. On Wednesday, April 6, we wish a happy birthday to Sister Maria Barnes. There will be no group Bible study on Wednesday, April 6. However, again, the scriptures are listed for study. And the Women's Missionary Society is scheduled to meet at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, April 6. The call-in number is 1-602-580-9626, access code 448-8394. On Saturday, April 9, we wish a happy birthday to Michael Sanderson. Thank you for joining us in worship today. It is our prayer that you will enjoy your day and that you will join us again next Sunday at 1045 a.m. Eastern Time. Until then, continue in the worship and praise of God, and we pray that God will keep you in his perfect peace. In Jesus' name, the Savior the one who makes you glad. Amen.